Now we have uh, the, the the direct beneficiary from uh, he's from Kenya. He's, yeah. he's going to tell us his practical experience, what he has done, and what he really benefited, and what would be his advice for his uh, similar young uh, farmers. So, Collins, kindly introduce yourself briefly and tell us your story. Thank you very much, Collins. Yeah, my name is Sam Collins Kikiruibi, uh, from Nyota Brew Roach Cooperative Society. In concern with the case study of a Nyota variety, high end beans, we got the seeds from the Cooperative Roach Society, which supports the entity. So that's the youth, youth wing and the, the, med the median and the as the chair of the youth wing, I'm lucky to be here on the platform to, to share with you on, on the new variety. Uh, the new is a very interesting crop because it has a, it, it matures at an, at, an, at an early stage. Roughly about a, a month, it's, it's already flowering. Yeah, the Nyota variety is as a grows, grows and matures early. And uh, this helps the, our farmers meet our targets in, in their time because it helps them. It helps them to, to meet their, their nutritional content, uh, requirements. Since uh, the, the Nyota variety has a, it's good in iron content, it's good for for various farmers and the young and the and the, the growing people. This from the from what you can see on the screen, I'm the guy in the middle. Those are the beans, those are the beans that I was I had grown at the about roughly about a week at the work stage. They were ready to be to be sprayed against the the cut ones and the aphids that was done accordingly. Uh, and, uh, in so doing, the aphids were the main the main challenge on the on the practice was the aphid because it it sucks the the water content from the plant and also when when the the plant is it's at, at this bearing stage. Okay. It's, it's all it's on the pots, yes. Yeah, maybe um, what would be your advice farmers would like to engage, uh, engaging with high iron beam? What would be your advice from your my experience? Advice, yes, from my experience, it's good for, for the youth, mostly for youth farmers yes, like me, to form cooperative societies whereby they can get access to the beans and even other products so that they can, where they can market easily as highlighted by, by, one of, by Dr. Samuel, do cooperative marketing. Yeah, that's the main, that's the main point of, of view from the Nyota beans. Yeah, so Collins is one of the youth members of Kaplomboi Road to Cooperative Society and uh, Currently, he has a crop of about two acres of nyota in his farm. And as you see, the picture that you are seeing on the screen is actually himself, the third one on your, the, the second last on your, to your right. And um, he, he, this is the second time he's doing nyota uh, alongside other youth members. And after, upon harvest, they put their grain together and the grain is sold through the local cooperative. And the local cooperative uh, has a storage facilities that facilitate the young people and the members of the community and the members of the cooperative to pull their, their grain together. So it, it, so it's something that he's building experience on and uh, glad to know that he's a chairman of the youth uh, wing of the cooperative. So in terms of uh, mobilizing the youth, uh, maybe he can tell us how many youth they have in the group, uh, how many of them are women, how many of them are men, just to give us an impression on the gender uh, situation. Um, our other colleagues are the, member, are the members from the county government, the residents of the county. Uh, there are 20 in number, only with uh, three of them being, the, being female. 
and the other and the 417 being male. That's the vibrant wing of the Road to Cooperative Society. Thank you very much, uh, Justin and Collis. Before uh, we conclude, I would like to give a chance to uh, Dr. Ebong, he used to be the executive director of Asareka, to make a comment on Bo's presentation and also share his experience. I think there's a very good uh, work going on in both livestock and crops as a whole. And uh, linking it with the private sector and making business is the only way where innovations can be taken up because there's no other incentive. It's the pool approach that we need, you know, to capitalize on to make transformation of our agriculture. Um, I don't have much experience. I know about iron rich beans. I know how much we need it very much to, to counteract uh, our nutrition problems, which is perennial. I know the role of livestock, particularly the small livestock like poultry. I recognize that everywhere the stumbling block has been the market. And I think all efforts should be done to do market feasibilities as the way forward to have a pull rather than a push approach to uptake of our technology. It's a very, very important component of, uh, of, of the work that is going on. Um, I've seen much as I'm retired, I'm still not tired. I've seen somebody talking about how do we milk animals which are wandering. We are thinking about that approach. We know about technologies which are there in UK for mobile milking and processing and packaging right on farm. And we are trying to get that one built up. Anybody who is willing can link up with us and we can jointly look at a Pan-African approach. That's all I can say. I mentioned things to do with contract farming. It's a way forward because then you can size production to demand. It's very, it makes that market challenge quite uh, manageable. Of course, it's not a panacea for solving all the problems because within it, there are also some obstacles, but certainly it guarantees one for market. Uh, we have a cooperative experience in here in Uganda for poultry, where we have a contract farming scheme linking with the poultry breeders, private, linking with the feed producers, private, linking with slaughterhouse facilities that sell to the retail market, supermarkets, big hotels, and so forth, and even export a bit of it outside Uganda. This has sort of produced some sort of market stability for this cooperative society, which have a contract to, to do those sort of things. But this is just one model which may not be applicable for everybody, but certainly market is an issue that the future research and extension approach should be targeting it. I was coming here to listen and contribute okay. only on chat. That's it, thank you very much. The issue of market visibility, the issue of your experience in the contract farming and so on. These are some of the issues that the element that we need to consider when you talk about commercialization and so on. Thank you once again for your submission and your contribution. Now, let me give a chance to Karen to, 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 to bring uh, those issues, suggestions, comments, and questions she extracted from the chat box. There's been a very intense discussion going on on the chat box, and I'm grateful to Dr. Josie Commander because he's been able to address most of the questions that uh, came up on the high ending presentation. And also Christian has been engaging the participants uh, with regards to some questions that came up on FARA for, for the FARA side. However, there are some that uh, were addressed also to Colin. There was a comment from Bupe Mwakasungula who agrees with Dr. Irene that there is need to go beyond research. So um, Bupe suggests that we strengthen institution and involve other players in the value chain if we are to achieve commercialization of the agricultural products. Re research should always speak to policy. Paul asks, how has the high iron been organized, the distribution of seed to farmers since there's a challenge of getting seeds, especially in the Western part of Kenya? 
There's a question how the high Anbin has engaged the sub-regional organizations such as Azareka, Kadesa, and Korav. Comparing with other local beans, how does the price of high iron bean compare? Then lastly, he would like to know more on the pest control method, especially schedules through the life cycle of high iron bean. Yes, I've been following the chat box and Christian is so busy replying to uh, some of the questions and uh, suggestions. One of the comments or uh, the question raised by Dr. Ebong also he has already addressed. I'm sure uh, Dr. Ebong has got uh, the response. The issue of nutrition going beyond only production, that is also a very important comment. Maybe one, one question addressed uh, to uh, Justin is the issue of distribution. Great, thank you. Yeah, on seed distribution, um, yeah, we have uh, uh, three seed companies in Kenya that are distributing seed. Um, but um, so this is um, East African Seed Company, which is distributing Angaza and Faida high iron bean varieties. And then we have Dubai Seed Company, which is distributing Nyota seed. Uh, seed. Uh, and then we have dryland seed, which is distributing Nyota as well. Uh, of course, among us other bean varieties and seeds, they may be doing it. But I know uh, there may be deficient or limited reach to the farmers because the seed companies haven't produced enough. And this is uh, 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 basically because of uh, the, it's a new seed variety. They're basically getting into the market. So they're looking at demand versus supply issues. But I'm sure in the coming one year or so, there should be sufficient amounts of seed that is available across the country uh, from those seed companies. Uh, we have high iron beans across many countries in Africa. Um, uh, key among them is the eight countries where we are doing the operations. Um, so depending on which country you are, then we can maybe engage directly and get to know. But again, the other thing is that uh, seed distribution is a regulated thing. So depending on the... Um, uh, the, the phytosanitary and uh, plant regulatory uh, requirements of each country uh, and the seed companies that are involved in this distribution. So that has to be subject to all those issues. Let me take this opportunity to thank uh, especially colleagues. Uh, thank you for your well, sharing your wonderful experience to be a witness that uh, high iron bean can really uh, is, is a potential, especially for the use. Uh, in the African context. And also thank you, Justin, uh, for uh, your uh, interesting presentation, and sharing you also your experience, what you have done and so on. And again, uh, Justin, he will be active again, uh, responding some of the questions which you are raising through the D group.